All right, welcome everyone to that one Goosebumps podcast. Today, our special, special guest, the Zach Baby TV. Hey! <laughs> and of course, I'm going to be joined with, with everyone else that now will be probably known as the main group. So, JR, uh, Josh Reviews Incorporated, Saw Guy Podcast, Reviewer Beware, and of course, the cameraman himself, Goosebumps Now. <laughs> And tonight's book that we're reviewing is Zach's favorite book in the series, Attack of the Mutant. Attack of the Mutant! Well, it takes it takes place in Riverview Falls. It's issue number 25. Skipper Matthews, he's a comic book nerd, and he has an orthodontics appointment that he has to attend to. And he tells his friend uh, Wilson Clark that he'll see him later. He uh, gets distracted on the city bus by talking to some hot chick named Libby Zacks and gets distracted and misses his stop to the orthodontics appointment, Um, gets off, and then as he gets out of the bus, he notices that his favorite comic book, which is the Last Mutant comic, the secret headquarters building, is right in front of his face across the street. So, Zach, what was one thing that you loved about this? Oh, what's going on with the audio? I like how the build, I like I like how the building looked. I liked how they uh, did the outfit for the mask, especially his mask. The props were really good. I wish I could come across that cardboard stand-up of the mask mutant that they used when he was in the basement. Oh yeah. Somehow when he found all those drawings of himself in that in that big room, when she shows up, which is actually at the very end of episode one that leads into episode two because it was a two-part. Story. It was a two-part uh, video for the story. I'll go. Um, I will be right back. I Continue. Honestly, really liked about attacking the mutant. It did get a little bit annoying how he's criticizing yeah. his friend Bobby, but I was interested in Skipper as a character because I don't get annoyed with the dynamic of him being this elitist because I think it's more funny and. Just looking at it from the perspective of how things like Marvel and DC are getting huge and comics are a huge collector's item, it feels like Attack of the Mutant excels in the novelty department. Also, the book finish is super strong. You got... When it's revealed Libby is the masked mutant, and you get the twist of he cuts his wrist. It's ink. For the sum of its parts, I know it's not one of the more popular piece parts, but I actually do think it's a very good addition to the series. I enjoyed the novelty of it. I enjoyed it. I'm going to go in separate real quick and just say, I really liked it. Yes. <laughs> so, so guy, go. I'm going to tell you, I lived in the whole time when this book and, and TV episode and everything came out, and I gotta tell you, it's a time this was peace, because like everything that it was going through with comics at that, that time, how kids were, you know, all about X-Men, Spider-Man, you know, no one gave a shit about the Avengers at the time, but, you know, everybody was all about, like, DC Universe versus Marvel, and that's at the time when they started making those crossover comics with it that one year, around in 96, 95. Um, and I freaking love the story, because, you know, that, that was me as a kid, you know, you read the comics, People would talk shit saying, ah, you know, they're reckless, not going to do anything. And as you guys said, you know, I mean, now that it's getting big, I I honestly would see this as something where I, I would see Fox trying to get in and try to remake this, but they wouldn't call it Goosebumps. They would make it something like their own and have it kind of like tie into the Marvel Universe or DC Universe. I could see this as a spinoff as its own movie. Um, but with that right being yeah. said, Come on, kid, it's fucking chair. amazing. I mean... <laughs> You know, if you lived that time and, and lived it as a kid and who liked comics and then you start seeing the stuff come to life, I mean, that that's just no other better horror story than you can do with that. All right. Sorry, my my roommate brought groceries home. needed help bringing them in. I'm back. And you don't notice, but the book, this book was actually inspired by I was not talking about comic stories from him as a kid. Oh, um, one of the comics that actually inspired him to write horror books was the Tales from the Crypt comics. Really? No shit! I didn't know That's that. in his documentary book. It's actually, if you watch um, the get the DVD um, complete series of Tales from the Crypt, you will find that there's a documentary talk where he's in it talking about that. Really? Wow. Yes. Oh, dang. Damn, that's something new. I didn't even know that. That's news to me. Well, yeah. 
Well, uh, I love the book. Uh, it's probably my second favorite book in the series. You and would, you comic book fan, flip, you. I'm, I'm going to flex real quick. I got this for $1, and this is like a $150 comic. Get flexed on, people. <laughs> 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 Anyways, I love the book. I love the mass media. He's like my favorite villain because he's just very, 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 very. You can tell like how much comic bookness you can see in him. I guess if that's a word. Well, so. I got I gotta come in on this. What do you guys think of the mass villain as far as like his superpowers and everything? Do you guys think he was a ripoff awesome. or something? Do you think? No, I think his powers are pretty good. The only thing I'm gonna say is when. I think Skipper in the book doesn't he say I'm like your biggest fan or something like that, or I know everything about you. I know everything about the mutant. So yeah. He's talking to Libby about that on the bus. Yeah, and Libby's the mutant. So if that's the case, why the hell would you try to fight him? Like he knows your weakness. <laughs> he's the mutant. That's why. They stole it. <laughs> so I mean, Josh, you're saying about how you were upset that like Skipper couldn't figure out Libby's actually the mass mutant. And to be fair, I think this book suffers from a problem that a lot of Goosebumps does, which is well, I Arnold Stein doesn't go into like, the semantics was, uh, of things because we also didn't figure out how exactly the comic world and the real world got blended. And that's not a huge criticism. I think that's just a general problem with most of the Goosebumps books. Yeah, The semantics aren't really covered very well. <laughs> no, I'm just saying the part with Skipper... I'm surprised that the mass media was actually trying to Nothing fight Skipper as as when, he knew, when he knew that he said that he was still the uh, the biggest fan when he was because obviously Lily or whatever her name is and mass media are the same person just they're in the skies but let me guess you this maybe he was looking for an arch nemesis because the gazelle was gay or how about this? Wait, let's let's, let's, let's out of the box it real quick. What if you shut your whore mouth for five seconds, Joshua? You shut your whore mouth. Okay. What if the comic world bled into the real world because of Skipper's imagination? Let me tell you guys this. That reminded me so much of a night. Round on street, the drink shop where that dude was into the comics. Oh, yes. he was super Freddy. See, yeah, it just it mind blown right there. I mean, you know, because I, I love the whole aspect of how they built in the whole comics. But I know you guys were talking about the uh, the time frame, how they don't show it. I think R.L. Stein did that purposely because if the stories were re well received, they would make sequels. I mean, if you look at Autumn Mask, they did Autumn Mask two with it. Um, I can't remember if they did a sequel to this. Do you guys know if they did a sequel to No, 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 no they did a sequel technically. They did. No, I wish they honest. did. Yeah. I wish they did too. Yeah, and, and that's the thing that that's I, I loved about R.L. Stein. He left you hooked on wanting more, but you know, he leave it open ended in case he ever decided to go back. And the, you know, it was a downfall for some of the Goosebumps series. But for what it was, I mean, it, it, it's a great story. And the fact that I mean it inspired a lot of stuff. You can see inspirations from the episode when they took some pieces off of, you know, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, the dream shot, where they fight and everything like that, and it's like, he cuts them and then it's paper. <laughs> We're also led to believe that in the recent, in a recent Goosebump book called The Wizard of Ooze, that they share a universe with the mass mutants. Oh, because Oh, Dr. Maniac? And Dr. Maniac, too. They, they all share a universe with the mass mutants. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because they're all different villains. It's the recent series that's called This One's For All In. They called it around 2000. This book. 2000, yeah. Oh. Cool. You don't have to fully. All right, so let's get to a rating system here. Starting with Zack Baby TV at the top. You want me to rate it? One out of ten, go. It's a ten to me. It's my favorite one. Fair enough. Brandon? <laughs> Nine out of ten. <laughs> Saw Guy Podcast. I'm going to give it an eight. This is definitely a top three. Okay. Josh Wasaki. I'll admit it. 9.9 .9 because that part was living just doesn't come for me. Where he knew that he was not. How is he supposed to add a 9.9 .9 difference to that? Because he was the only one that saw it. Thank you. Right. I don't think that's such a thing. I think a 9.5 because that part was living just doesn't Yes. Okay. And then reviewer beware. <laughs> I'm gonna give it an eight and a, eight and a half because again the semantics of it I have a bit of an issue with, but again nothing too serious. 
Um, they're on limited time. They can't really go too deep, too deep into everything. Yeah, that, that's also very true. I agree with Zach there. Oh, me? I'll go seven. I don't really care much about superhero stuff, so it wasn't bad, but it didn't uh, didn't give me a boner. Gave me one. A couple times. <laughs> Especially the tights with the gazelle. Kind of must have some serious beauty. <laughs> You know, the only thing that's still out. The young King Zell was the worst villain I've ever seen, or superhero I've ever seen. He, he left the middle of the fight. Oh no, he's too strong! I know, he left I know. the kid. <laughs> I still wish, even though I really like the Masked Mutant a lot, I feel like there could have been just a little more time spent with him and just a little more development. That's probably also why I'm only going eight and a half. Oh, fun fact. The voice of the Haunted Mask 2 was the same guy with the Mask Wasn't he also in Dead House? Oh, I knew it! And he was on Welcome to Dead House. He was that little skinny construction worker with the, with the yellow cap. Yep. I knew it. And I found him on Facebook. He's Canadian the somewhere. The one thing I really like to see in the Mask Mutant is the end where, where he tricks him. He's like, oh, a lot of people are going to be in my acid. And he's like... Acid sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid. The Goosebumps game, the mouse game comes back and says that Liquid no longer messes with him, so they, they got to bring him back in a book or something. I feel like some Goosebumps episodes have really goofy acting, and I feel like Attack of the Union was definitely one of them. Well, it's supposed to be. <laughs> yeah, I still enjoy it. All right, guys, standard score for the book, 8.5. It's not bad, it's 8.5. Yeah. B plus. Okay, so channel announcement. Someone go. Talk about what you're going to do on your channel. I'll be soon doing anime reviews. And hints. Actually, hold on. Before we do that, can we all agree that there should have been a sequel? Yes. Yeah. yeah. What, about, what about sniffing sleepy pills? Get rid of, like, the terrible Monster Blood sequels and just do a sequel to the Monster Blood 3 can suck it. Yeah. Let's go straight yeah. into yeah. Mouse Mutant 2. Yes. Is everybody aware that Zack Baby TV actually did a continuation of it on his channel? Oh yeah, I made up my own, I made up my own uh, uh, Return of the Mutant. I made my own story and edited it. And it's on YouTube. It was great. Yeah, it's only about twelve minutes long, but it's pretty cool. Channel announcement. Someone else go, please. <laughs> just had a live premiere of an hour long of like 15 scary stories, and I got one next Friday coming out. And then the following Friday, I got 24 dog and werewolf stories coming out. Jesus. Wow. Brandon? What quarantine? Do you have any announcements, okay. Brandon? Well, well, I am going to be having a creepy internet mysteries video coming up soon. I got a Bioshock review coming up soon. I got a lot of projects I gotta do. So expect a lot of stuff on my channel soon. So I got a podcast. Alright, so I just recently dropped the announcement of episode 58, and I'm gonna do it on Secret Window. Also, too, I'm gonna be releasing a lot more sermons coming up. There's gonna be more $5 horror time. More from the grave and tons more content coming on to you guys. Uh, follow me on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter for all the updates on everything. Reviewer beware. Well, uh, what I've been doing is I still have, luckily I have four episodes in the, in the uh, to be released that have already been filmed, so no need to worry about that during this quarantine. And what I've also been doing besides Goosebumps is I have been replaying the remastered trilogy of my favorite game series of all time, Spyro the Dragon, and that will be reviewed and discussed on my channel. I am just currently playing it and working through it. Josh Wasaki, Josh Reviews Inc. Uh, Josh Reviews Incorporated. Um, I'm going to be doing some anime reviews. Tomorrow I'm doing a live stream of Assassin's Creed Syndicate. We're going to do some more of the story and some side missions. And um, that's basically it. And Brandon, sign us out. All right. Well, this has been the podcast with no name, and we'll see you guys in the next episode.